Hello, Renee. How are you? Hi, Adrian. It's so good to be here. I am oh. fantastic. I am so honored and blessed to have you here with us today and to have the community meet you because you are a confidence queen. You are living, as we were talking about prior to I, me hitting record, is you are living one of my favorite, favorite things to do, which is creating confidence, but also with a flair and shopping and yes. all of that fun stuff. So yes. Yes. I know we're going to talk about a million different things, but for those people that are watching today and our community that might not know who you are, can you give us a little bit of history of who you are and what you do? Absolutely. So who I am and what I do. So I am Renee Lindo, my personal and brand stylist, and I help women to use their style to increase their visibility, expand career opportunities and make more money. And we do this by creating polished outfits in functional wardrobes that align with their personal brand so that they can change your energy and feel good and really attract opportunities that they desire. So that's me in a nutshell. Previous, I come from a pharma background as a national sales director in pharma, so I come from the corporate space. Yes, and I led a team of reps across Canada. I was, a, I was in charge of all, all the things, the marketing, the leadership, the coaching, and I just knew that when I showed up well for myself, when I was dressed well, it just gave, it just changed my confidence. What I felt I could do, what I put my hand up for, mm. um, having difficult conversations, negotiating better for myself. So I said, you know, if I could help other women to tap into the power of their style, that's really what I wanted to do. So I stepped away from corporate about five years ago and started my business so i work one-on-one -on -one with women who are really progressing um the corporate ladder women who have gone through some type of change who just know they want to show up differently for themselves mm. and use their style as a tool and also do corporate um trainings and workshops that yeah. is incredible you know i first of all i applaud you this is something so unique i know for me personally, it's something I struggle with. I work towards and from a branding perspective, I think that your wardrobe has to reflect you. This is, you know, I feel like we're going to talk a lot about what you do all on its own, but I still want people to get to know the incredible you because I, I am so incredibly interested in how you got to where you got to. Yes. And I guess I'm going to ask you, did you always know, like when you were younger, did you love to play with clothes? Like for me, I mean, clearly I like bling and shine and rock and roll. And that's always sort of been my style. And as I grew up, you know, people would always try to put me in a suit and this is what you got to wear. And I'm like, but that's not me. And I cut clean clothes, you know, designer stuff. You know, I feel like I'm pretty well polished. I could still use you though. Oh boy, could I use you? That's, that is another, con that will be a live podcast that we do. That would it. be so I much fun. It. Yes. But I always knew who I was and I always wanted to remain true to myself. And I love the fact that you actually get to know your clients and you get to know who they are internally mm -hmm. and where their comfort level is. And yes, you do probably push them outside of their comfort zone a little bit, mm -hmm. but you still want that reflection of their personality. Absolutely. Because that's what your style is, right? Uh, your mm -hmm. style is really the outward representation of who you are internally. And it is, I see it as one of your biggest communication tools. It's the first thing that people see before you even open your mouth. The first thing. So, you know, sometimes I get pushed back when people may say, oh, you know, style or how you look, that's superficial. It doesn't matter. You know, it's about I'm a great person or I'm a fantastic employee. I'm a this, I'm a that. And those are all true, maybe true. But before I know all of that about you, I see you. Right. That's the first thing mm -hmm. I, I, I do. I see you. And so we Unfortunately, know, yes, yeah, you're right. And what you us. said, people think that it's, you know, oh, well, you've got to see past that. That's great. You know, I do a lot of work with in the psychology space and you form an opinion of somebody within the first three seconds. Right. Seconds. That's what I was going to say. 
right? Before data, you even data. say hello. Absolutely. Data tells us there's data that says, you know, within the first, you said three seconds, but in the first very short time, people are making decisions about us. And there are four things that the data proved out there. They're deciding, are you likable? Are you trustworthy? Are you competent? And are you confident? Okay. Mm. Those are four pretty important things that people are just, they're just judging before you even have a chance to speak or to explain yourself or to tell people who you are. So right. my, my position is you want to ensure that the message that you're sending is the me is the story that you want people to know about you. I say own your narrative, right? Yeah. Control the narrative Own the story that people are going to be, because they're going to have a story about you anyway. So you may as well give them, give them the words to you, yes. create the story that you want. I love that. And that is so, so you and so incredible. I mean, you and I have gotten to know each other a little bit, but I could just tell your LinkedIn page just kept popping up and I'm like, I need to connect with this woman. I love her. She does what I, you know, my, my favorite sport is shopping. Then it's, you know, all things fun and, you know, things you can put together, but sorry, we're going to so keep, I'm going to keep pulling us back to the younger you. Yes. Were you always like this? Do you feel yes. you were, I know I was like always yes. very into, and I'll, I'll tell you a story about when I was a mother of four very young kids, but were you always like that? And I'm not talking about like in your twenties, I'm talking about under 10 and you know, in your yes. teens, were you always as like a, that? About yes, stuff? as a little girl, as a young girl, I've always loved fashion and style. It's something mm. that I did with my mom. So she was very much into style and how she looked. And so we always went, I'm Jamaican. So we always would go to the Miss Jamaica beauty pageants. We always went to fashion shows. We always did those things. We always shopped together. So I've always loved fashion and style. But growing as a, again, growing up in Jamaica, being a stylist was never anything that a profession, right? I never heard of that. It was not known. Uh, we went, you, you need to go to school to get your education, get a good job and be a doctor, lawyer, accountant, one of, you know, a profession, oh, yeah. right? So yes. it was never until, I mean, a few years ago when I said, oh, you know, I'm good at this. People have, people come to me for this. This is something that I can do as a business. But I've always loved it. Even in university, and I think of even university, I would help my friends get dressed for dates, help them to put their, uh -huh. do their hair and makeup. But at the time, I didn't, it was just something that I loved and that, that I was good at, but I never saw your it as your passion. As it's your passion. I think it's always been your passion. Yes. And it's funny, it's not until we have these kinds of conversations or, you know, I just started, oh, actually, I'm almost finished writing my book. And when I look back, people always say, you know, don't look back. And I'm, I'm like, I look back because I had some great memories, but also how far I've come. Yeah. But just like sort of reliving some things, I'm sure even talking about like me hearing about your mom and going to pageants and whatnot. Yeah. Obviously, there was that passion inside of you. But like you said, there was never anything like, oh, you're going to be a stylist, yes. you know, you're going to be yes. this, 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 and this. And yes. how beautiful is it that you can now live yes. with something that you love so that dearly? I, that I love. And I think the biggest, what I love most is actually seeing the transformations that my clients go through, right? When we mm -hmm. work together and to see how she came to me, where she, how she was feeling. And then when we work together and truly understand who she is, what she wants to bring out, what she wants to share with the world, how she wants to feel and the woman she wants to be. When we're able to use her clothes to achieve that and to see the, the shift, right? Your energy shifts, your energy changes when you feel great, when you feel like, yes, this is me in my body, right? Mm. And so to see that, it's really, it, it's exciting. It is so exciting. I mean, look, our heroes growing up, let's just use... Batwoman or Wonder Woman as an example. She had her bracelets, she had her nice outfit, threw on her cape and superpowers and magic happened, right? I feel the same way when I get dressed and I'll share, <coughs> excuse me, a quick story with you. So I have four boys mm -hmm. and they were all like very young at the time, but every day, I mean, mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough or not, my mother has always lived with me and has helped me, but even if they were sleeping, I'd get up at four in the morning. I wanted to shower, I wanted to do my hair, I wanted to get ready, put on my makeup and get dressed for me. It was never for anybody else, was never for about like a job, it was never 
for that purpose. It was always because I felt good. And not that I sit yeah. there and stare at myself in the mirror, but I know how I look because I know it makes me feel good. It's a me thing. I think Absolutely. if you're doing it for you, and then I would actually get pushback because I would be dropping kids off to, you know, under grade six, several of them. And, you know, my friends would show up and they're in, you know, their husband's, you know, dirty, what do you call it? Like right. t-shirt, gray track pants. Right. They've got sleep in their eye, breast oh. milk coming out. And I don't, again, I don't judge them, right. but right. they were actually judging me. They're like, oh, you, way to make us feel bad. Right. And I'm like, oh, well, that was not the intent. No. You know, you look great. I get, I'm an early riser. I get up, this is my self care yeah. for me. Yeah. Oh, wish I had that, you know, luxury. And I'm like, yeah, but what time did you get up? They're like, oh, like five minutes ago. And I'm like, well, three hours, it's almost my lunch hour at this yeah. point, right? Yeah. And so I think it's the choices that you make. And if that worked for them or they didn't have the help, whatever it is, like I said, I don't judge, but it's funny how people will come at you and judge you. So what would your sort of philosophy for somebody, if I was your client and I came and told you that story and I said, you know, wow, that really made me feel bad because it was never my intention to make anybody feel anything but special. Um, and I, I know what I would say that that's sort of not, that doesn't belong to me and that's a reflection of them. Well, that's exactly my, that, that's my answer. Right? Oh. I'm like, that's their position, right? That has absolutely mm -hmm. nothing to do with you. That's how they're projecting their feelings onto you, right? You're doing this for you. I talk about this even when we were going through COVID and people were talking about just rolling out to bed and going to work and rolling out to bed. And I'm like, hey, take some time to just to get ready, to get dressed for your day. It changes your mental, your whole mentals and how you feel. And when I talk about your style being communication, it's two ways. Yes, it's the message you're sending to the world, but it's also the message that you're sending to yourself. I'm important. Mm -hmm. it's, important that I, it's important that I take time for me. It's important that I do this because it makes me feel good and look good. Right. right? So yes. it, it's two ways. It's not just what other people are saying. It is the shift that can happen to you. Your energy. I mean, it, I mean, it changes when you look and feel good. Mm. And energy... You put, you make yourself available for so much more when you're feeling high vibe, when you are, when you feel like, you know, you can walk in this, I own this joint, right? You walk into that yes. different kind of vibe. So yeah. you've got that like canter when you're walking in, right? Yes. You have a different <laughs> swagger, right? You're, you're, you're taller, your shoulders are back and you are, you know, confident. it's the confidence. Uh, jinx. Yeah. It's all about the confidence. But I love the fact that you keep bringing it back to that it's about yourself. And, you know, I stress this to people, friends, women, uh, when I did the one on one coaching or whenever I do my events, it is about what makes you feel good for you. And I want to ask you this question. So I was uh, invited to uh, I've been invited to a, to speak at a, quite a few events, but two, I'm going to say recently that I've turned down because they wanted to, me to be somebody I'm not. So I talk about rock star confidence. That, that's my gig. I mean, I think you know, or I, you and I chatted that I've worked with, you know, Mick Jagger and U2, Bono, all those fun guys. So, and girls. And so my vibe is my vibe and it's what I feel good in. But they're like, oh, well, you have to wear an evening dress. Well, you have to wear this. You have to. And I'm like, look, I can do it. I can do, you know, whatever. I'm going to give it some thought. And like you said, my superpower and my messaging in my, everything that I talk about is do what makes you feel good. It's not about what mom or dad want. It's not about what kids or your brother, sister, spouse, lover, friend, whoever wants or bosses, partners, whoever. You do you, right? It's for you. So if somebody's trying to get you to be somebody they're not, you're not, what is your sort of opinion to those clients because it, I see it all the time. Yeah, well, what the first thing is that, you know, you have to think about when you're, when you're wearing a costume, which is really what wearing things that don't feel like you, you're not comfortable wearing, mm -hmm. you are not going to perform at your best. You're not going to do your best work. You're not what your authenticity will not be there. And people can see right through that. 
So I would say, you know, really think about, is this an organization that you really want to be a part of? Is this a gig that you want to take on? Because it, 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 just, it just may not end well. It'll be stressful. It's going to be difficult for you to take on this role, perform at a high level at this role. And then I just, I just don't think you're going to do the best work that you can. When we are authentic, when we are dressed in ways that make us feel good and feel most like ourselves, we are comfortable in our skin. And when we're comfortable, we, are, we feel confident, right? So that's what I'd say. Yes. You really have to think about, is this something that, whether it's a job, if it's a job that, you know, you have to wear clothing that's just not your vibe, is this a job that you really want to be a part of? Is this a job that's going to really match how you work, how you are most comfortable? You have to think about that. I love that. And, you know, again, it's not that I don't get dressed up and it's not that, I don't feel confident or comfortable in other things. I think it's when people start to push their sort of opinion or their perception of how you should be is I think when I, you know, kind of push back in a very polite and respectful way, of course, but, you know, I explain, well, the whole point of me showing up the way I show up and in a very expensive designer leather jacket with designer everything is because this, this is my messaging right? This is all part of my messaging is be confident and whatever that looks like to you. And, and if why I did want... they hire you? Why did they reach out to you? They reached out oh, exactly. to you because of who you are, how you show mm. up, your vibe, your energy. So that's why they, they chose you. So I find it strange that they're like, okay, I want this person, but then they need to be like this. But no, what you liked is what you saw here. That's what, that's what you're, you're investing in. Exactly. It's, you wouldn't get Wonder Woman to change your outfit, just saying. And, <laughs> but I, and I use myself as an example because I never want to refer to other people because I can't really articulate their feelings as much as I can mine. For me, it was just a, the point of exactly what you said. It wasn't being authentic to me. But I get women all the time saying, well, you know, I'm really comfortable in pants, but all the women wear like outfits and they've got, you know, dresses and they've got suits and and I'm not so comfortable. And my answer is always then as long as, you know, I, if there's a dress code, you're, you look professional, everything's clean and it makes you feel good. That's okay. What I do agree. you tell your clients? Like if they come to you with, they must come to you with these kinds of issues. What do you say? I agree. But similarly along those lines, right? If, if I, I, I always am going to land to be comfortable right? Comfortable and, and comfortable. And this is something I think we need to speak about or at least address. Comfortable doesn't mean a hoodie and sweatshirts and sneakers, no. right? That's not the only way comfortable no. is, yeah. right? Comfortable is just wearing clothing that accentuates your assets, that you feel fantastic in, that balance your proportions, that show off the best parts of your body, right? Mm. You can be comfortable, you know, wearing clothes that you like. You, you really do not have to try to squeeze and twist yourself into places and spaces where you don't you don't fit it's not that's not sustainable number one and I don't think you're gonna be very happy there exactly and you know thank God that there is so many designers that are now catering to women affordable not so affordable secondhand yeah. that are for real women, right? Because, you know, long gone are the days of, you know, wastes like this and whatever the case may be. And, you know, you talk about comfort and I'll tell you a funny story about my dad. Every weekend he would wake my sister and I up. It didn't matter if it was rain, sun, snow, whatever. Seven o'clock, sometimes it was 6.30. Come on, go get dressed. We're going out. And where are we going? Where? Don't worry where you're going. Go get yourself to... And we'd go and we'd look, you know, presentable or nice or whatever. And we'd be going for a coffee. We would be going nowhere or we'd go to church or we'd go for a visit. And we're like, why does this have to happen at 7 a.m.? And it's like, because how you show up for others is really a reflection of you and how you show up for you. Absolutely. And it was such an important lesson for me. And so I think that what you're doing, the work you're doing and just telling women like this is what you know, getting that, cause some women don't even know. They're like, they don't know where to start. They yeah. know they want to be there, right. but right. they don't know how to start. You know, so, yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of the women who I help, they don't know where to start. They know they want something different, 
They know mm -hmm. that how they're feeling is not how they want to feel, especially women who are perimenopausal or menopause. All right. That's a huge mm -hmm. shift that we're navigating. A lot of my clients are navigating now. So their bodies have changed what they what they used to wear how they used to fit where they used to shop that's all different so they and then sometimes you know there's the whole narrative that you're in menopause life is over right you're kind of you're in menopause that you just have to kind of settle mm. and be done and i am that's just not my vibe i'm like we're in menopause yes but we can do things that help us to feel good that help elevate our mood that you know understand how to dress this changing body so that when we show up we feel fantastic. Our clothes fit great, right? So yes. that, that's where my mindset is. And I love that because I have a lot of friends that are going through that. And, you know, I, I see the difference in what they're wearing. And I see that because I won't see them all the time. And their bodies are changing and mm -hmm. gaining weight or not or looking different. They're not happy with their skin, right. whatever the case may be. Right. And it's like, in my mind, they're still so beautiful. And it's, and you know, I always tell them, but I mean, it, it has, it's not my profession like it is yours, but I wish people would realize beauty comes from the inside out. And so it's how you feel inside. If you feel really crappy, you know, you're probably going to be in yes. that hoodie and whatever. And absolutely. But there's data, right? You say that. And there is data that says that when we're feeling depressed and down, we reach for clothes that's baggy, oversized, dark, you know, gray, that gray hoodie, big baggy yeah. stuff. When we're feeling great, then we usually reach for brighter colors, right? Mm. That it, even something simple as color. As color. I'm wearing black today. <laughs> but, but I mean, that's fine. I All the colors have, you know, different vibes. But I'm just they saying, sure if you're do. feeling down and you want to lift your mood, think of some colors that, you know, that look great on you, that you like wearing, that, you know, can change your mood. It's such a powerful, well, simple things that are powerful. As soon as I saw you on screen, I'm like, oh, that's her, of course it's her color. <laughs> and then with the fuchsia sort of like in the background yeah, here, I'm like, oh, yeah. so beautiful. Okay. And you're right. It is that pop of color that will yeah. just lift your mood. I mean we could get into the whole color conversation yeah. after, but this is about you. Uh, I even know that I used to go through sort of what are the colors that make you happy? Like lilac mm -hmm. clearly is one of my favorite colors. Uh, and I have forever painted my room that color because it's just a, it's like a nice color that makes me happy. Yeah. And everybody, you know, in the winter is like, aren't you going to change that nail polish? Like, shouldn't you go to like brown? And I'm like, brown doesn't make why? me happy. Yeah, <laughs> why? Like, why? But what? I know, but it's well, just all these rules. Fine. I'm just like, why those rules? We don't need those rules. Why do I need to wear a brown because it's fall? No, I like to wear bright colors, so I'm going to wear yes. a bright color, especially and in the fall when it's so dark. Yes, and it's funny you can't see, but I'm wearing white pants, and I wear white whenever the heck I want yeah. to. I cannot tell you the controversy it causes in the mall. They're like, oh, shouldn't you have had those put away by now? I've got these nice gray or black. Oh my and I'm goodness. Like, no, I'm going to just be looking. Yeah, it's it's hilarious. It's You know, they always say that uh, when you get pregnant or you go shopping, buy a pair of earplugs because you know what? People love to share their stories and their opinions. Opinion. You know what? I'm, I just like, you know, I don't let that inside of me. I just sort of either roll it off with like yeah. some fun and say, nope, I wear this all year long or whatever. Because right? people feel that they can say whatever and it's okay. And they, they're, they don't realize that sometimes these words, even though it may not be intended, affect pe people take it mm -hmm. differently, right? And, and it can well, yes. really hurt people. And you don't know where that person is, right? Like, and trust me, I have my days like every other human being does. Some days it'll, you know, kind of be like, I'm not sure why the person said that, but no worries. It doesn't belong to me. And then I can just imagine if there's somebody that is really struggling with confidence right. and they get a comment like that, it could really, really hurt somebody. So yeah, my thing is be kind to everybody. You never know, you never what, know what people are going through. Right. Exactly. So I've got a million questions, but I know we're getting strapped for time. I have three questions I for sure have to ask you, okay. if you don't mind. All right. So one of my questions to you is this. 
while you were on this journey of shift and change, there are so many people I cannot even tell you, and I'm sure most of your clients are going through something very, very similar where they're going from corporate or you know C-suite to founders and entrepreneurs or vice versa, whatever the case is. What was your biggest struggle and how did you deal with it? My biggest struggle? Yes. As I made my shift? As ah, you made yeah. yeah, so my shift was huge, right? I always tell people, people huge. pivot. Uh, I didn't pivot. I did a complete 180, right? From pharma <laughs> corporate over to... I'm thinking a few 360s, but yeah. anyway. Yeah, right? totally different. Yeah. So completely different. I knew nothing about the business. I knew nothing really about the styling business or even entrepreneurship. But I knew that I loved this. I knew that, um, you know, I told myself, you know, I'm smart enough. I was very successful in corporate. So there has to be some some transferable skills some things that I've learned that I could, we will be able to use here. So mm. I think the biggest thing for me is just being, going into entrepreneurship and leaving corporate where in corporate, everything is kind of given to you, the marketing, the business plans, your, everything is given to you. And in entrepreneurship, like there's nothing. You're creating everything from scratch and you kind of, well, where, where do I start? So that was challenging. And I think that the big thing also was that if I could have done it again, if I could do it again, I would create my audience before leaving corporate. Right. Oh, so I left, I left my, my job just because I'm like, yeah, I just have to go. I didn't really have a plan. There was no business plan laid out, but I just knew that my, that situation couldn't continue. Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, I'm just going to go. And so I left, started my business everything from zero. So I didn't have a community, didn't have Instagram handles, had nothing, right? Yeah. So I was building and trying to eat at the same time, which mm -hmm. is difficult. Very. So very. that's something I would, I would say, you know, if you're thinking of entrepreneurship or jumping from corporate, build something, have a community at least that you can talk to, who sell into, who mm. already know you, right? So that when you make the jump, you have a warm audience. I love that. And you know what? That is such great advice and worth its weight in gold because you're right. It's tough. And you know, but it's also tough when you're in it to say, well, I can't put it out on social media because then people are going to know what I'm doing. But what I would, you know, maybe add to what you said, which was so incredibly important to anybody looking to make the shift is even if you find a niche, so let's say you love shopping, start videotaping you going shopping and Absolutely. hey, look at the find, look at this. Yeah. So then you become this expert or this person. That's what I mean, yes. In you know, your you audience. don't have exactly. Right. Yeah, you don't have to go out there and say, this is I'm my business. Leaving. Yeah, right. exactly. 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 But that is worth its that. weight but in gold. Create a community, right? Create mm -hmm. a community, whether if you're, for my, would maybe go shopping or share something you like or comment on off it, whatever it is that's your vibe. But just start sharing and start building community so people get comfortable with you. They know who you are. They look forward to your content. And then, right, you grow from there. Exactly. So next question, not the last, but I'm going to ask you, and I kind of think I might, I'm going to guess my answer in my mind. Now, you've done amazing rock star things. What do you want your legacy to be? I think you've just, I think you've just started. So yes. what would you want your legacy to be? Or what do you sort of see how it's molding today? Cause I know some people, I just interviewed a lady and she really, she was like, well, I'm sort of transitioning and you know, I know everything I want to do. And so no, I okay, have never, okay, I've, never, I've never thought about it before. This is the first time, but yay. it come, it came quickly to me because I know. I want my legacy to be that I have changed. I have changed the perspective on style. I have equipped. Uh, I've equipped women to think about their style in a way that is empowering. Think mm. using their style as a tool to help them to move from where they are to where they want to go. So my legacy, in a nutshell, is to change. Yeah, change the perspective on style and to help women to to use their style as a powerful tool that it is. Because I, I, I think our style that. is under undervalued, underused, 
if we really knew how important it was and what a big tool it was, we'd see a shift in our lives. And I agree with you. And I love that legacy. And it's exactly what I thought I would have just added. I would have just added, like you said, the whole empowerment of women. Yeah. But it is the, the service that you are giving women from your heart and soul. Like, I feel like, you, yes, this is a business, but you do this from your heart. Yes. And this is your passion and you're passionate and you're right about everything you're saying. I can so relate to, and I know many women in our community will be able to relate to as well, because just like you said, it, people think, and I don't know, we can debate this all day long. I know there's been a real shift of how people look externally shouldn't matter as much as it is internally. hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. However, <laughs> say a big, however, it is still so important because that's how we form our opinion about people. I mean, like you said, there's been so many studies and social experiments and studies that have been done. You, I mean, people love scrolling through Instagram and TikTok. Go and look at, I think that it was this billionaire or something on TikTok or Instagram, one of those platforms that dressed up as somebody that lived on the street and asked for change or asked for something. and nobody really stopped i think one person and they they interviewed that person and i think they gave them like a five thousand uh, dollar school grant and then he dressed how he normally does and was just excuse me could you this whatever the question was and everybody stopped mm -hmm. so it's that it's right we it's not even subconscious i think it's or sorry i don't even think it's conscious i think it's sort of subconscious it is that's what i was going to say it's subconscious yeah, it, we're not we don't even think people are not conscious, constantly saying, OK, I'm judging this person, but it's just a part of human nature. It's a part of our makeup and who we are. Yes, we don't want to say that we judge. We judge people just by how they look, but it's just a part of mm. being human. It is. It is. And it, again, I urge every single one of our community members to I'm going to have all of your contact uh, coordinates and all your social and everything in the description just to check out what you do because it's so unique it's so important for your confidence and honestly it's so incredibly helpful everything you write i read and so and i'm thrilled awesome. that you're going to be one of our contributors to yes. the magazine yes, so excited. super excited my closing question because i know i like i said i'm going to keep you all darn afternoon and we're going to talk about clothes and blingy pretty things that will be our second podcast yes. awesome. is so as you know, tagline is the struggle is part of the story. I am unbreakable. What does it mean to you to be unbreakable? Uh, you are coming with all the hard questions. I got to tell you something. Every single person, because as you know, and as all our audience knows, I don't give questions. Everybody asks me, what are we going to talk about? And I'm going to say, we're going to talk about you. Yes. So, you know, That's for exactly. people, somebody told me something extremely unique even earlier today, but it's always different because yeah. the word unbreakable can mean so many things to so many people. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know, take a stab at yeah. it. Yeah, oh, for sure. Unbreakable to me, to me means getting up again, getting up again, getting up again, being mm -hmm. resilient, being, you know, you're being knocked down and you're getting up again. We're not broken. We may be hit down. We may we have to take a little break, but we're going to get up again. Right. And, and that I, that is what I think is unbreakable. Sure. I mean, life is going to throw all kinds of crap at us. Every, we're going to get so much stuff, but unbreakable is you keep going. You pick yourself up, brush yourself off, get whatever, whatever help you need, whatever supports you need to finish your journey or to continue your journey. I should say that's how, that's what unbreakable is. I love that. And you know what? That's very similar for me. Unbreakable is all about resilience. And it's, you know, like you said, whether you bend, whether you fall, whether you, you know, do you stay down or do you get back up and, you know, keep moving forward, even baby steps, even, you know, motion, like you said, energy of getting up yes. that just all in itself, you know, starts the journey of being unbreakable. So let me tell you, I'm on this journey to win, right? to win mm -hmm. in every aspect that I can. Right. And if you're down, you're not, if you stay down, you're not going to win. You're only going to win if you continue getting up. 
getting up, getting up. So I love you. that. And I love you. Thank you so Thank much you. for all your time. Thank you so much I will look. Yes. Thank you. And I look so forward to podcast number two. We are so going to dive into yes, all will. the little secrets that you have. I'm going to get yes. you to share some. And I'd also just finishing off would love to do something live because we are in the same city. All so right. we should do something live. Okay. And we'll bring the, we'll bring the film crew and nice. we're coming to see you. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see Thank you soon. You. Bye. Bye.